Hello Lucy and Conrad and Caleb. It's time for another Fantastic Four adventure. And this time we have a new villain. Or is he new? Hmm? The name of this villain is the Invincible Man and he seems to live up to his name. The Fantastic Four have a hard time defeating him. So let's read the story and answer some questions. All right. First of all, here's the cover of the comic and we see the Invincible Man with the question, who is the Invincible Man? Well, we'll have to read the story and find out. But the title of the story is Death of a Hero. Who is it that's going to die? Mm, we'll have to read the story and find out. But as you see on this front cover, the invincible man in his hood and his green outfit trimmed in gold seems to be too powerful for the Fantastic Four. What are his powers? Well, this is a great story, and so we'll read it and find out. But first, we have a little bit of drama as we see the thing sitting in the middle of a giant machine. What's the purpose of this machine? Well, uh, it the editor tells us that the brilliant Reed Richards is once again attempting to change the thing back to his human form permanently. Remember, Benjamin Grimm became the thing because of cosmic rays that, uh, that inundated him while he and the others were uh, on a mission in outer space. And he really doesn't like uh, his appearance, although he likes being super strong and being a part of the team. But uh, he, of course, wants to uh, look like a normal human being so he and his girlfriend Alicia can have a real romance. And so that's what's going on uh, at the beginning. Uh, Sue says all controls are ready for Operation Reed. <laughs> the thing is saying, who designed this wacky contraption for you? Rube Goldberg? I feel like a prize nut in here. And uh, 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 Reed says, quiet, Ben. I'm going to switch it on. Good luck, old friend. And Johnny says, only Reed would... Uh, uh, try to help Ben by altering the um, microelectric waves of his body. Wow. Uh, whatever. That's what he's going to do. But look, his arm is stretching over to the lever. He's going to switch it on. Let's see what happens next. So with a silent prayer, the fabulous Mr. Fantastic activates his complex electronic machine as the powerful thing sits motionless, not knowing what will happen next. Then there is a blinding flash of many hued lights. Wow, looks like Christmas and fireworks all put together. And when the glare has faded, look, uh, you've done it, Reed. He's been grim again. Reed says, but that's only half the problem. We have to see if the change will be permanent and if there are any dangerous after effects. Working with all the skill of the scientific genius he is, Reed finds that there's pulse normal, heartbeat is strong. He says, so far so good. If we're successful, we will have lost an irreplaceable member of our team, but it will be worth it for Ben's sake. Sue says, you mean he'll never be able to become the thing again? Reed answers, that's right, Sue. After 24 hours, if he is still Ben Grimm, he'll remain that way for the rest of his life. And Johnny says, then he can marry Alicia and settle down if that's what he wants. 
Reed says, let him rest now. We'll check him again in an hour. Sue says, things won't seem the, th the same without the thing. Johnny says, he's my big buddy, and I want him to be normal, to marry the gal he loves. But why can't he be the thing also? He's one of us. He belongs. And so as Johnny, in his frustration, creates a fireball and kicks it away from him, he says, nuts. If the experiment fails, I'll be sorry for him. But if it works, I'll be sorry for me. I don't know what to hope for. But look, what is this? Meanwhile, countless light years away in a far distant galaxy, a strange shimmering ray shoots out from a planet whose name we of Earth could never learn to pronounce. But look, that ray shoots far. Ooh, what a pretty sight of outer space. Cutting through space faster than a trillion laser beams, knifing through time and infinity by a science totally alien from our own, the mysterious ray finally comes to rest at a certain portion of the planet Earth, the exact target at which it had been aimed. And as the indescribably powerful beam strikes the peak of a long dead volcano, on a lonely crater island, the isolated mountain blazes with new life, hurling off its peak with a thunderous roar. See, the ray hits the volcano, it explodes, and uh, the reflection shines in the ocean around it. Then, slowly, awesomely, a strange and ominous figure begins to move upward towards the surface. We see his two feet. We see his shadow in the smoke. A powerful, sinister figure which will represent one of the greatest menaces the Fantastic Four have ever faced. Finally, reaching the summit of the volcano, the figure stops and ponders for a moment. Then, as though reaching a momentous decision, it bursts into flame and flashes away towards the mainland like a fiery comet. Look, uh, he looks like a, a, an alien torch flying around and away from the volcano. He thinks, I know what must be done and nothing shall stop me. Meanwhile, back at FF headquarters, uh, Alicia arrives. Reed says, I'm glad you were able to come, Alicia. It's time to check Ben again, and I knew you'd want to be here. Alicia says, but I'm worried about those after effects you mentioned, Reed. I, I hope nothing happens to Ben. Johnny says, I still can't believe we're going to lose the big guy, or maybe I just don't want to believe it. But Sue hears and says, listen, someone is coming. Look, it's Ben. Alicia asks, how is he? Well, he's angry. He throws open the door and he says, all right, pal, you've got some explaining to do. Reed says, Ben, what's wrong? Johnny realizes he looks mad. And look, he takes a swing at Reed Richards. He says, you're darn right, I'm mad. I don't know what's going on here, but I don't like it. Well, Mr. Fantastic dodges the blow by stretching out of his way. And he says, easy, Ben, we've nothing to fight about. And then the torch flames on and flies around. He says, Ben, cool off, pal. What's bugging you? Ben says, keep away from me. All of you, keep away. Reed says, stay back, Johnny. Don't frighten him. I was afraid of a, re of a reaction like this. Alicia comes to him and says, Ben, my darling, what is it? What have we done? And Ben looks at her and says, who are you? How do you all know my name? What am I doing here? And Sue realizes he doesn't know us. 
Reed says, Sue, throw your invisible force field around him. Hold him. I know what must be done. Sue says, all right, Reed, but I don't understand. Well, Ben doesn't understand either. He's in, trapped inside this force field, struggling to get free, but he can't see it. And Reed says, it's one of the after effects I feared. Physically, he weathered the changeover in perfect shape, but he suffered a memory loss. He has amnesia. Raise the field slightly so I can feed him this sleep gas. And so within the force field, he inserts some sleep gas that will put Ben back to sleep. Alicia says, he doesn't know me. He doesn't remember me. Oh, Sue, I've lost him. And Sue says, don't worry, Alicia, dear. It'll be all right. Reed will fix things somehow. Reed carries Ben off in his arms. He says, everything checked out. We were so close to success. Poor Ben. Johnny asks, what are you going to do now, Reed? Reed answers, I've got to reverse the microelectric waves. It's less than 24 hours. There's still time to change him back to the thing. It's what he'd want. Being Ben Grimm would be meaningless to him without his memory, without his love for Alicia. And so look, it worked. He was able to reverse the experiment and we can see the thing's arm reaching out. And he says, hiya, Stretch. Hey, I'm still my old lovable self. What gives? Reed says, I'm afraid I failed, Ben. The change didn't work out. Ben says, some hotshot scientist you are. Maybe I should have teamed up with Doc Doom. Reed says, I can understand your disappointment, Ben, but I'll keep trying. I promise, Ben says, big deal. Then he comes out of the door and sees Alicia. He says, hi, Alicia. Boy, am I glad to see you. Now the day ain't a complete waste. Alicia says, oh, Ben, it's you. You're yourself again. I'm so happy. Sue asks, Reed, why didn't you tell him that the experiment did work? The change would have been permanent. It was only his memory that suffered. You didn't fail completely. Reed answers, no, dear, it's better this way. The disappointment won't be as keen. And Johnny says, boy, I wonder if he knows what a great pal you really are, Reed. You'd let him think you were a complete flop in order to soften the blow for him. Well, enough drama. Let's go back and find that figure who came out of the volcano. The strange creature we had seen before nears the great harbor of New York. Seeing the skyline in the distance, he dives into the sea, changing from a flaming firebrand to a silent, seagoing stalker. He says, I'm almost within sight of my goal. And then he uh, comes out of the water onto the, the dock. He says, at this hour, the streets are dark, almost deserted. None will see me. A short time later, in the lonely cell of Dr. Franklin Storm, the imprisoned father of Sue and Johnny, do y'all remember uh, Dr. Franklin Storm? He's the one who saved Sue uh, after her injury from the menace of uh, Mole Man. But look, the creature is now stretching through the bars. How interesting. He can flame on. He can stretch. Who is this figure? Who is this character? Well, he's seeking out Dr. Storm. And look, his, his form is changing. He's morphing to look like Dr. Storm himself. He thinks, he is the one I seek, and now it is a simple matter to rearrange the earthly molecules of my pliable form. Dr. Storm real, realizes someone is in the room. He's thinking, am I losing my mind? I seem to sense another presence here with me. Well, he's not losing his mind. No, there is someone here, someone behind me, 
but it's, it's impossible. And he looks and he sees himself behind him. And the, the character says, nothing is impossible in this vast uni universe, Dr. Storm. Dr. Storm says, what? It's like looking into a mirror. But the character says, silence, I must work fast. You're about to take a journey, Dr. Storm, such as no mortal has taken before. And look, here is a powerful ray that enters into the cell and surrounds Dr. Storm. And he is swept away out into the universe, out past uh, planets and stars. And the figure left behind says, a journey to the fifth quadrant of the Andromeda galaxy from which you shall never return. Oh, no. Meantime, the next morning, two famous visitors appear at the warden's office. Johnny and Sue have come to visit their father at the prison. And the warden says, of course, I'll issue a pass for you to see your father. It's been years since he's had any callers. Johnny said, poor dad, he didn't want us to see him. He wanted us to forget him, as if we could. Sue uh, said, uh, he wouldn't let anyone tell us where he was. He sacrificed so much for us. And then she shares the memory of what happened those years past. Uh, she said, I remember how it all began those long years ago when we were a happy, loving family. Her mother says, the medical society is giving a dinner in your father's honor, children. We won't be back till late. And the father says, would you cook dinner for Johnny, Sue dear? Sue says, of course, Daddy. Gosh, we're so proud of you. And Johnny says, I wish I was a great surgeon too. But, uh, uh, Sue continues, Dad never reached that dinner for the car suffered a blowout on the way. And poor mother, Dr. Storm hollers out, Mary, Mary, oh no, not you, as they crash uh, down a cliff. Dad had miraculously escaped unscathed, but mother was critically injured. And so Dr. Storm uh, performs the surgery himself. The other doctor says, you did your best, Franklin, but it was hopeless. No one could have saved her. And Dr. Storm said, I've saved so many, but now my own wife, my own wife. Oh, and he's just, he's just uh, tormented by the pain and the sorrow. Sue says, Dad never recovered from the shock. He gave up his medical practice. Life seemed to hold no meaning for him. He blamed himself for Mother's fate, and he slid down and down. Look at him. Now he's, uh, he's let his, his himself go, and he's smoking and drinking and gambling. Someone says, you've lost enough tonight, Storm. Why don't you go home? He says, what for? Mary isn't there. She's gone. I'll bet it all on the red. Finally, his gambling losses took all his money. Then he borrowed from an underworld loan shark, and when he couldn't repay in time, some mobster comes to threaten him, and he says, no, you can't threaten me or my children. They all I have. Put away that gun. It'll go off. Oh, and the gun uh, explodes, and he was still riddled by guilt feelings, uh, Sue said. Dad would say nothing in his own defense at the trial, and he silently accepted the sentence of 20 years to life for manslaughter. So uh, he killed a man, and he had to go to prison, and there he is behind bars, all because of his drinking and his gambling and his uh, loss of respect for himself. So it's very tragic. Sue finally concludes, but he never meant to hurt anyone. If only we had been able to testify to help him. He did it to save us. The warden says he'll be eligible for parole one day, and perhaps his good record will speak in his favor. And now I know you want to see him. 
Minutes later, the policeman says, you have 15 minutes, Storm. Storm says, I will not need that long. Johnny says, Dad looks so angry, so different. He goes on to say, hello, Dad. We know you don't like us to come here, but we wanted to see you so badly. Sue said, we wanted you to know we're working on your parole, trying to do everything we can. But the man says, that will not be necessary. Sue asks, what do you mean? And then look at his face. He says, I shall show you what you mean. Prepare yourselves for the surprise of your life. He stands up. He says, during my years here, I have worked in the prison laboratory. Nobody ever suspected that I was making myself invincible. Invincible? Johnny says, something's wrong with him. Something bad. Then he turns invisible. The policeman says, sit in your chair, Storm. You know the rules. He says, rules no longer apply to the invincible man. So the invincible man becomes the invisible man. And the other policeman says, he's vanishing. And then he walks over to the wall and bam, invisibility is but one of my powers. Whatever the Fantastic Four can do, I can do better. Now I shall escape using the strength of the thing. Bam! And he knocks a hole in the wall and he escapes. The policeman says, it's impossible, but he did it. He escaped before our eyes. Well, don't just stand there, says the other policeman. We've got to turn in the alarm. Johnny says, Dad! Where did he go? What will happen next? The policeman says, after him, he can't have gotten far. Sue says, Johnny, I can't believe it. We gained our powers due to the effects of cosmic rays. But how did he? Johnny says, it's more than I can figure out. I'd better signal for Reed and Ben on the double. So he shoots off the Fantastic Four flare gun. The other policeman says he called himself the Invincible Man. We'll see how invincible he is. Reed is looking out the window. He says, look, Ben, our red alert signal. Get the Fantastic Car fast. Benjamin says, one of these days you're going to offer to get something yourself and the shock will kill me. <laughs> He's always so tacky. But the two of them fly off in the Fantastic Car, leaving Alicia behind. Uh, the thing says, wait for me, Alicia, baby. i got to tag along with Rubberhead and make sure he doesn't get a ticket for passing a stop sign. Reed says, Benjamin, didn't your dear old Aunt Petunia ever tell you that silence is golden? Nah, she never stopped long talking long enough to say anything. Reed says, okay, Ben, let's quit clowning and concentrate on finding Sue and Johnny. The signal came from downtown where they went to visit their dad. Not far away, after the fantastic car has flown past, this fist is raised in the air. He says, I've done it. I've convinced the world. I'm Dr. Franklin Storm. And now for the second part of my task, the complete destruction of the Fantastic Four. He continues, he says, all is in readiness. I cannot fail, but I need one more thing, one final touch. If I'm going to call myself the Invincible Man and look at the flash of light, then I must look like an Invincible Man, and now I am ready. And so there he is, in his hood and his costume, his gold belt and gold boots, he thinks he's ready to tackle the Fantastic Four. Well, maybe he is. He seems to have their powers. He has the power of flame and stretching, invisibility and strength. Do you know anyone else who has all of those powers? Have you figured out who is the Invincible Man? Well, we'll have to wait 
and find out when we come back to finish our story. And we'll do that really soon. All right, y'all. I love you very much. Looking forward to telling you the rest of the story. Bye-bye.